Okay, welcome back. This is Dr. Kling, and we're again talking about linear equations. And uh, so far, we've just been reviewing the basic algebra of linear equations. We did part one, we did one linear equation. Part two, we had uh, two equations and two unknowns and how to solve them. And I think once you saw that video, you probably remembered that you'd seen that before, and you probably uh, um, you feel like you can do that. The challenge in economics is recognizing. So recognizing, I can't spell in public, uh, recognizing a linear equation because what happens when you when a linear equation is walking down the street you don't even notice. Uh, so um, or you don't know kind of what the parts are. So I wrote this linear equation as a naught plus a1x plus a2y equals 0. All right, you never see an equation that looks like that in a uh, first year economics class. First year economics class, uh, you'll s these variables all these things all come in disguise. The constant term here comes in disguise. The, you, you're not sure which are the variables. Uh, and the slope terms uh, also come in disguise. So what's a typical way that they show up in a first year economics class? Well, you might see a demand relationship. Q demand is equal to A minus B P. Or, um, or actually, let, let's just use an example. Quantity demanded equals uh, 5,000 minus 3 P. And then we have quantity supplied is equal to negative 200 plus 8p as an example. So what's going on there? What's going on there is we have two equations and two unknowns. What are the unknowns? Hmm. Think about it for a second. What, what's, what's the equivalent of x and y in this generic linear equation? Well, the, what's it, the equivalent is Q because quantity demand and quantity supplied are going to be the same ultimately and P price okay so those so so those will be the equivalent of X and Y of X and Y or Q and P are the X and Y variables and then the a0 um, okay now remember we have two equations now so we have a second equation um, and so the a0 would be, might be, if, if this is the first equation, this, and then we have a second equation. So this is 1, let's say this is 1, and then let's say this is 2, and this is 2. Now th <coughs> and so the A0 is there, the B0 is down here, that's our second equation. And then we have, now what about these slopes here? Well, what we've done with this QD and QS is they've already solved for both of these equations in terms of Y. Now, that's sort of good in that we've reduced this to a 1, let's say, we're no longer, we no longer have those coefficients to worry about. They're just one. That's nice. But remember when we have two equations, we want to solve one of them for y and one of them for x. And here we've got sort of both of them for the same variable, q. So we, if we were going to solve these, we'd have to turn one of these around and solve it for p. So let's, let's do this one. We'll solve that one for p. Uh, no, no, we'll do the second one. So the second one we have 8p is equal to q uh, minus plus 200 because we move the 200 over to that side, and then keeping our blackboard down we have p is equal to q plus 200 over 8, and then we could substitute that back in to this equation for p, and then we'd have, so then we'd go down to one equation in q and solve for q, and that's how we would do that. So again, the key is to recognize 
what are the what are the variables what are the constants what are the slopes it gets even messier when we do the simple Keynesian model in macro so we might see y is equal to c plus i plus g and we get c is equal to c naught plus little c y so what are the variables here and, and, and let's say we're given that i is equal to a hundred g is equal to a hundred let's say we, we don't we're not even given it this way we're given c is equal to forty plus point eight y okay so we have something like that um, so now what have we got here what have, we've got constant terms that are all over the place here's here's three constant terms and what are the variables well the variables are y and c so those are the two unknowns and then we have our two equations and then the slope terms are sort of weird in this one there's just a one and a one in this one there's a one and a point eight so those are the slope terms. All right, so it's a it's kind of a in some ways it's a simpler one. And the nice thing is we've already got instead of having two variable two equations where y is set equal to 1, we've got one where y is set equal to 1 and one where c is set equal to 1. So we're already set up to just throw this equation into here. And so we say y is equal to 40 plus 0.8y plus, and we can put in the, the hundreds there, plus 200. So it's equal to 240, and combining those terms, plus 0.8y. Now you, uh, now, so now we have one equation and one unknown. We have to collect terms in y, and we get... y minus 0.8y is equal to 240, or y times <coughs> uh, 0.2 is equal to 240, or y equals 1 over 0.2 times 240. And of course we call this 1 over 0.2 a multiplier. But again, it's all just playing with linear equations. The key is to recognize, so when you encounter something like a simple Keynesian model, ask yourself, what are the, ver what are the unknowns? What goes into the constant, into constants? And what gets multiplied? So what 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 goes into the slope? And basically anything that gets multiplied by y multiplied by y uh, affects the slopes. And so uh, <coughs> then you just proceed by doing do a substitution. Substitution usually ultimately to get one equation for y. So one equation for y. And then collect terms, move to the left, and then divide to get a multiplier. Divide and then move to the right to get the multiplier. So the example in the example, this is where we moved the terms to the left when I moved, put the 0.8y over here, subtracted. Then 
<coughs> um, I combined the terms and then moved it back over to the right, dividing to get a multiplier. But it's, it's a um, so again moving over to the right here to get this multiplier. But again, it's just a matter of figuring out what are the unknowns and then using basic algebra to solve the equations. So that's it on linear equations. <laughs>